right, we are rolling. Okay, um, so I'm Jenny Dale. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Information Literacy Coordinator at UNCG. Uh, I'm also a liaison, and I work with five departments, classical studies, communication studies, English, media studies, and women's gender and sexuality studies. I do work really frequently with MLA style, but um, several of my departments that I just mentioned actually use all kinds of different styles. Um, communication studies usually uses APA. Uh, English is usually MLA, but sometimes Chicago style, uh, and kind of all across the board here. Um, so I am talking about MLA tonight, but the kind of things that I'll discuss will be things that are relevant really to other citation styles, um, particularly when we discuss Zotero. Um, so here's the description of tonight's session. Um, let's talk about writing and citing with MLA. We'll discuss the basics of MLA style. We'll also discuss how to use Zotero most effectively with MLA. Again, for you, that will also apply to APA. To get the most out of the session, we did recommend that participants have either previously attended an introduction to Zotero workshop or have a basic knowledge of Zotero. So then my question for you is, have you ever used Zotero? And again, you can use the chat or you can just unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I just started using it this year, this semester. Okay, awesome, yeah. good, I'm so glad. Um, it's a great tool, so I'm glad you're using it. Okay, so I am going to paste this into the um, Zoom chat, but just so that you can get it. Um, I do have my slides link available. It should be viewable to anyone. I'll double check that and make sure. Um, yes, looks like it's available to anyone. Um, so if you want to follow along, but also so that you can refer back to it later. Um, so that's that link. Um, and here's my kind of general agenda. I'm going to give a, a quick review of Zotero setup, going to give an overview of MLA citation style, and then an overview of some of the basics of paper formatting. Then I'm going to talk about creating MLA work cited lists from Zotero, and then writing and citing with MLA in Google Docs or Microsoft Word. So which of those do you use most often, Word or Google Docs? I like Word better. Okay, that's what I'll demo tonight then, which since it's just you and me, it's like a fully tailored session to your <laughs> favorite uh, program. So that's what we'll go with. Awesome. Um, so I'm just going to go quickly through Zotero setup and I know you are already using Zotero. So this may be or probably is something that you have already done. Um, so, you know, the basics are to create that account at Zotero.org, to download the desktop application and browser connector, and then to sync your Zotero account to the desktop application. Um, and we do have a guide for Zotero, which I also have linked later on in the session. Um, but I'm just going to kind of go through, um, for the sake really of the recording right now, how to find Zotero.org. Um, the login information here is also where you can register for a free account, but you already use Zotero, so you already have one. Um, and then on back on that main page, Zotero.org, the download button is where all the magic happens. Um, so I usually use Chrome and it knows that and it's reading that I need the Chrome connector, which I do already have installed. Um, I also have the Zotero um, desktop application, or they call it the personal research assistant, downloaded. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up on my computer as well. So that I have that ready to go when the time comes. Okay. So just some of the basics of MLA style. Um, MLA stands for the Modern Language Association. And uh, like many other citation styles, actually, it started out um, for a specific journal. Um, and this is the, this is the case with um, APA as well. It started out for like some specific journals. So it was a style sheet of the PMLA, which was publications of the MLA starting in 1931. It became the official MLA style sheet in 1951. And then they started coming out with the handbooks in 1977. Um, and those will be the, you know, citation guide books that you're probably used to seeing. Um, and we are currently on the eighth edition, um, and it's used primarily in languages, literatures, and some other humanities fields. Um, and I just have this quote from the original MLA style sheet in 1951 because it talks about grad students. 
We earnestly hope that the MLA style sheet will be widely, even universally used in the fields of the modern languages and literatures, that it will be carefully studied by every practicing scholar, and that graduate students will be instructed early to follow its practical recommendations. So this is another thing that we see reflected with a lot of citation styles. Really, the idea was for sort of um, uniformity uh, in publishing papers and uh, articles specifically in different fields. So APA started because they wanted people in psychology and other sort of behavioral and social sciences to have a sort of more consistent uh, citation style. MLA started for the same general reason just in the humanities or in the language and literature specifically. So when you're using the MLA 8th edition, um, one of the things that's really different about the 8th edition from previous editions um, is the, the way that it has uh, its core elements set up. So these general elements are author, title of source, title of container, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, and location. And that is not really um, general enough to capture everything, but we'll look at a couple of examples in a minute and see how these different element pieces get tied to those examples. Um, the big deal with MLA 8th edition, the new concept that it really put forward is this idea of containers. Um, so in MLA, uh, when a source being documented as part of a larger whole, like when you cite an article from a journal or um, you know, an episode from a TV series or whatever. I have a couple of other examples up there. The, the article itself is the publication or the source, as they would call it, and then the container is the journal. Um, and a source can have more than one container. So for example, um, I'm sure you as a psychology um, someone studying psychology use library databases like PsycInfo. So in MLA, a source that you find through PsycInfo would have two different containers. It would have, it would be an article from a journal and that would be container one. And then it would also be a journal retrieved from a database. So it's in sort of two containers. Um, so just, uh, I'll just go through I'm going to just go through one of these. Again, I think in psychology, you're most likely to be using journal articles retrieved from databases. Um, and if you ever did happen to cite that in MLA, this kind of walks through what the process would look like. I'm very visual, so this kind of thing is helpful to me where I see kind of how they have um, notated where the title of the container is, what the location of the container is, title, all of that good stuff. And they've broken this one down so that you can see the first container is the journal African American Review. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting with MLA style um, is the number element um, is like both volume and issue or volume and number. Um, and then the second container here is the database that it came from. So in this case, they're saying just EBSCO host, but if you had an article from PsycInfo or something like that, um, you, that's where that container would go. Do you have any questions so far? Nope. All right, awesome. Keep rolling. Um, so I have created this complex and perhaps slightly confusing uh, slide here where I link all of the um, different pieces of, so looking at the different containers and how they show up in Zotero. So this is an example of a journal article um, and I just show where all the different pieces are that we would need for a citation. And really, again, it's a little, it's a little confusing. Um, but my main point here was to show that everything's in there. Everything you would need is in Zotero. Um, it's just not always in the order that we see it in our citation styles. And this is definitely the case with APA as well. Like they always have the title first and in most citation styles, we would have the author first and so on, things like that. Um, their date is pretty low down, whereas, uh, and, and that's, that's pretty appropriate in MLA where the date goes later, um, but in something like APA that, you know, the date comes pretty early in our citation. So just kind of an illustration there. And a couple of tips for using Zotero with MLA that also I think are actually very relevant to APA. Um, 
I always check title capitalization when I pull anything into Zotero. Um, a lot of times, and we'll see this in some of my examples, when you pull something from a database into Zotero, uh, it will pull in weird capitalization stuff, like the title will be in all caps or the author's name will be in all caps um, in a way that we don't want. That's not going to be um, consistent with citation conventions. Um, also, always make sure that Zotero has read the source in the correct format. Every once in a while, I'll see it pull a book chapter as if it were a journal article, or it will pull a journal article as if it was like a website, and that's easy to correct within Zotero, but you got to keep an eye out for it. Mm -hmm. I also always recommend checking for missing citation elements. Um, I don't see this happening a lot, but every once in a while, for me, the thing that sometimes get miss, gets missed is the DOI or the URL. Um, and you can always put that in your Zotero window. And I also always recommend deleting any kind of random extraneous information that pulls down in Zotero, like cover story. I think I have an example in a minute where they have cover story listed as part of the title when it's really just a description. Or author email addresses, that's one that comes up quite a bit. Um, so I am going to grab some sources. I have a bunch of links saved, um, and this will just be hopefully a good refresher for um, how the different, our different databases and different resources kind of pull their Zotero uh, information down. So over here, I'm going to open up a new window. Um, and I have selected all my sources um, here to be related in some way to uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg as a tribute to her. Um, so I have a bunch of different articles. I have some books and book chapters, um, and I'm gonna pull all of them down into my Zotero library while we're here. And I'm gonna create actually a new collection for tonight, and I'm just gonna call it Building Exciting within LA so that I can easily keep track of these. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this one down from Hein Online. Um, and anytime um, you are in Zotero and you're in the actual desktop application like this, if you have selected a folder, that should be the folder that your item goes to, um, but you can double check. Um, so I'll show you that with the next one because um, I didn't quite catch it with this one. Um, so here is my next one. This one is another journal article about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The first one was written by her. Um, and so I'll pull this down again and you can hopefully see where it says saving to writing and citing with MLA. You can change that. You can go to some of your other collections if you have the wrong one selected, but in this case, I'm good with where I have it. I'm gonna pull down a couple more just so we have a few different things to work with. And this is the example I mentioned where it has cover story like written in the title um, and it will pull that down when I am actually trying to put in Zotero. Okay. So that's one of those things. Probably won't happen with like scholarly journal articles, but um, you never know. You never know what kind of weird stuff could be in there. And then I'm pulling this one in from JSTOR just to show a little bit of a difference. And this one is a, a book chapter. So I wanted to show again, a slightly different kind of source. And let's see, I think I've got one more. This one is a full book from our library catalog. Um, and with our library catalog, you sometimes won't get the little book icon in Zotero. So let me show you, for example, um, if I were to be in the catalog and search Ruth Bader Ginsburg, what I did earlier. Um, and when I click on one, if I just click on this first one, it reads the whole thing as like a results list, like a folder. Um, if you are finding like one thing from the library catalog or from the red box, um, you could get the link here and you can use that link in a new tab or a new window and then it does read it and understand that it is a book source. So let me see if I have any others that I wanted to bring in. 
Um, yeah, I did have one more from JSTOR. This one's an article from JSTOR. All right, so let's check it out and see. Um, and I just noticed uh, that it was giving me a warning that it didn't pull down the full text. Um, with Zotero, it will try to include the full text if it is available. Um, but Zotero, the, since Zotero is free, although there are some paid options, but for the free version, it does not, um, it, it has a limit to how much it can store. So sometimes you'll get sort of an error if it's trying to pull down PDF and you don't have storage. Sometimes it's just an error in the sort of communication between the database and, and Zotero. But all of these that have this little blue dot um, here in my Zotero library, are all going to be things where the full text did work. Um, so it came down. So I'm going to do a little tidying up in here. Um, so this article is one of the ones I mentioned. So I mentioned that I want to take off this cover story bit here. Um, I also noticed that it's reading this as a journal article, but this is from Time Magazine. So I actually want it to be a magazine article. Um, and I just changed the item type there, and that is a pretty easy option within uh, Zotero. So that one, I think, is looking pretty clean. We've got our author, publication, volume issue. I think all the stuff we need about both containers, the magazine itself, and then um, the library catalog is the term that they use for like the database that it came from. This is another journal article. This one is from, uh, that I got from another one from EBSCOhost, tells me this here. Um, so in this case, I've got pretty much everything I need um, again already. Um, I wanted to show you this as someone who probably uses APA. Um, if you hover over the title of an article, you can right click on it and change it between title case and sentence case. So since APA article titles would use sentence case, um, that's what you would select in your case. I'm gonna leave this as title case since I'm sort of talking about um, MLA and that's what they use for article titles. Um, but that is something that I use a lot when I'm helping people um, cite within uh, APA because it really cleans things up and makes it easier when you're exporting. Okay. Okay, this one is a book chapter, which they call a book section. I see an extra random colon in there that I'll clean right up. Um, and otherwise, let's see. So I wonder, I'm gonna actually go look at this book and see if um, the title that they have for the book is actually correct. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so the title of the book that it came from is American Justice 2014, Nine Clashing Visions on the Supreme Court. Um, all right, so that's the book title and uh, they actually have the um, subtitle in the wrong place. So just a quick copy and paste. Um, and then I think everything else is looking good. Same deal here, and with the book, let me check the book. Um, the one thing I often do with something like this where it's pulled in the little copyright symbol, I usually just get rid of that because it really only needs the, the, the year as a number. Um, and then finally, this is one I wanted to make sure I showed one where it does this uh, all caps thing. Um, so this, uh, another nice thing with Zotero, I can hover over the title here and just like I showed you a minute ago, I can right click on it. And for me, I'll change it to title case uh, and that cleans everything up for MLA style or if you were to select uh, sentence case. One of the things that happens when you do select sentence case is it lower cases everything except for the first word. So in a case like this, we would want to capitalize her name, you know, anything basically that is a proper noun. Um, mm -hmm. If you were um, if you were working with APA, but I'll take it back to my MLA. So now I've got a Zotero library. I've got let's see what six sources: a book, a book chapter, some journal articles, and a magazine article. Um, and what I am going to do? Let's head back to my 
slides here. Um, and I just want to quickly pop and talk about MLA paper formatting. So we've got our Zotero library set up with the things that I want to use. We'll get back to that momentarily. Um, but one of the things that uh, Zotero can't do with any citation style is like help you with the actual paper formatting, you know, the headers and the footers and the page numbers and all that good stuff. So that's something that you usually have to figure out with your citation style. In MLA, um, they don't require a separate title page uh, and their running head is pretty different as well. Um, so this is an example from the MLA Style Center site and you can see there's the um, student name, professor name, course, date, and then there is a title and it's meant to be a specific title to the assignment there that's all uh, centered. And then for each page, we have a header with the page number next to the author of the paper's last name. So it's a bit simpler than APA um, and some of the other citation styles. Um, and I just have links here to some examples um, and more information, um, but I don't think that we necessarily need to go into that because I'm, I should, I have been assuming this whole time, but you don't usually use MLA, is that right? Um, I think I'm using it for an English class, but we're doing like both, so. Okay, mm, okay, gotcha. So good, so I've been accidentally teaching both the whole time anyway, so <laughs> it was like a cool accident. Um, so I, again, like I said, I'm a very visual person, so for me, having examples um, makes all the difference. So I like to be able to see how someone else has done it. Um, and see kind of what it ends up looking like. And so I usually can build from there, but I want to point out this is all the same um, as what, you know, we saw in that one just little example that I had pasted in. But when I look um, at the article, uh, the article, I guess it's the paper, the paper itself, I'm seeing um, examples of uh, MLA in-text citations here. So I'm seeing um, authors and page numbers. That's the standard MLA citation when you have an author and then a space and a page number. Um, mm -hmm. You're kind of seeing lots of examples of that through here. Um, and then, this is, a, this is a pretty lengthy paper here. Um, uh, also towards the bottom, uh, towards the end, on the last page or pages here, we have the full work cited list. Um, and one thing I always like to point out um, when I'm looking at a, a, a paper example or an article is what I look for in this case. So if I'm looking at this um, citation in text that says Burden and Safer 171, then when I go down to my work cited list, what I'm looking for is whatever starts with burden. So in this case, I see here it is, burden and safer, dramatic life of a country doctor. Um, so whatever shows up in your in-text citation should also be the first thing that shows up in your works cited list. And you can see here with the works cited list, um, it's in alphabetical order by either author or by whatever the first element is. So mm -hmm. first one, this website here, and this is common with web sources, they don't always have authors listed. Um, so it skips the author and starts with the title. Um, and then everything else builds alphabetically from there. Uh, and when anything goes onto a second line, it uses uh, hanging indents. And that is something you can actually do really easily within Word. And I'll make sure that we look at that when we go in there. So again, I just like examples to help me understand how things work. Um, so that's why I have some links um, to different examples for formatting paper. Okay, citations. I just mentioned this, but in-text citations are required when you quote paraphrase or summaries, summarize from a source. And this is true no matter what style you're using, MLA, APA, Chicago. Um, in MLA, the particular format, like we just saw, is author page. So if it were me and it was something I wrote, it would be Dale 20. And then the works cited list is where you see the full on MLA citations for every source that you used. Um, and one of the things that's important to do, especially in terms of academic integrity and avoiding plagiarism, is to do a quick check before you turn your paper in and make sure that everything that's in the text 
is also in the works cited list. So if you have a parenthetical citation in text, want to make sure there's a matching citation in the works cited list and vice versa. You want to make sure everything that you have in that works cited list is also showing up within your in text citations. And that's another thing that is true no matter what style you're using. All right, so I want to show you how to create some very quick works cited lists using Zotero. So I have a little picture here um, that shows what it'll look like. I'm going to actually go into it and we'll see. But I also, this is a good opportunity to point out that Zotero.org, um, where you actually can get Zotero, is also an extremely useful place to find documentation. They keep a lot of documentation in their support section. Um, and there is particularly helpful information about creating bibliographies. But let's go over to Zotero so I can do it myself. Okay, here we are. We're in Zotero. We're in my folder for writing and signing with MLA. I am going to right click on that folder or Zotero calls them collections, but to me it looks like a folder, so that's what my mind thinks it is. Um, right click on that, and then I'm going to click Create Bibliography from Collection. Um, and you can see the ones that they have listed here. I'll point out uh, they also have this option to manage styles and get additional styles. And there is like a wild number of styles. They have 9,882 styles available. I don't think you're ever going to need to use any of these, but I figured I'd show you just in case. Um, usually we're going to be sticking with um, the, the major styles and they, if I right click again and click create bibliography, those are the ones that tend to already be here in this list. So MLA 8th edition is the last one I used and that's the one I want to use now. My output mode, I want bibliography. Citations would be those in-text citations. Um, so bibliography, you can save as RTF or copy to clipboard. Since you're a Word user, I would save as RTF. Um, and I'm gonna click OK there. Save it to my downloads so I remember where it is. And now I am going to open this up. So let me find it. I got a lot of junk on my computer. So it takes a moment. But when I open that RTF, I will be able to open it directly into Word. And since Word is your preference, that's why I'm recommending it. Um, it's going to name it whatever the name of my collection was. And now when I open it up here, um, I can see what it would look like. So there are a couple of things that I can see now that I have generated this citation, I can see that are weird that I might not want. So the first one that comes to my attention is this first line here. And I see this random thing that says page one online resource. Um, and that's a book that I had found and not an online resource. So what I want to do at this point is go back to Zotero. Um, and I want to figure out where that so that this they have this line called extra. If I see anything there, I'm just going to clear it out. And then the next time I generate a citation from here um, or a bibliography from here, it will be accurate. I also see that it, pull, it tried to pull in this EBSCO full text right here, um, which is because I had this open so that the full text it is showing. If I tidy that back up, it would not show again. But I also see um, this Time USA LLC. And I don't know if that's necessarily something I need. So that's something I'd want to check an MLA citation example um, from a resource like I like the Outlet Purdue. Not everybody likes that one. There are other good resources. There's an online writing lab from Excelsior College that's really good. And I have some resources that I'll link later. Um, but I would try to check and see with a magazine, do I really need to have um, this like publisher info or not, since I already have the name of the magazine itself. Um, let's see if anything else looks weird right off the top of my head. Um, yeah, so I, I'm noticing that for some of my sources, it's pulling in 
like the either the affiliation um, or the public publisher of the journal. And when you're looking at journal or magazine articles, you usually don't need that. So I'm going to go tidy that up a bit. Um, again, these are in that extra box. And my general rule is if it's extra, we probably don't need it um, for a citation. So now with all that stuff kind of tidied, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to click create bibliography from collection. This time I'm actually just going to copy to my clipboard instead so you can see what that looks like. Um, I often do this. So if you ever have to give like a, a PowerPoint presentation in class or um, you know, you're doing uh, Google Slides or something like that. You have to have to give a quick presentation. Usually if I'm doing something like that and I want to have citations, I just do this quick generate a bibliography and paste it in like on the last slide um, just so that my citations are there, um, but I didn't have to like write them out from scratch. So now I think I have tidied things up a bit. There may still be more things um, that I might need to do based on some, you know, looking at some example citations. But overall, it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. Um, and so I could put up at the top here, I could say this is my works cited. Uh, and there we go. So that's what that would look like if I just needed a works cited list. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the time, you need a little bit more than that. You need more than just the works cited. So that's what we will go take a look at momentarily here. But let me uh, head back to this. Um, this is where I'm going to just go straight into a demo of using Zotero with, in your case, Microsoft Word. It works almost exactly the same. Um, if we were to use Google Docs. Um, so I'm going to close this out. Um, and the other one I created. And then I'm going to pull up. Don't want to see. Okay, so I had already set this up with MLA style um, intern or MLA formatting. Uh, and the title of it is An Amazing Adventure in Zotero. Um, so that's my paper that I'm writing tonight. And I just want to show you how this works. So if you open up Microsoft Word on a computer and this Zotero is not there, that menu, um, the best thing to do at that point is to go to the Zotero desktop application that you have. And I say it's under, under preferences. Um, and look to see if the word processors need to be installed. So for Microsoft Word, it says the admin is not currently installed. It actually is, so I'm not going to mess with it. Um, but if you get this message, like if it's not in Microsoft Word for you and you get this message, you can click on that installation um, from there. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I am going to start my amazing adventure in Zotero. So uh, the articles that I had saved for in, in my folder for tonight were all about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And that'll help me in a minute when I try to um, figure out what, um, what specific source I'm citing. So um, how about this in September 2020, the United States lost a great Supreme Court justice. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And so what I'm going to do here, because I want to include a citation to something um, that, you know, corroborates that for me. So I'm going to click this add edit citation. It asks me again if I want what citation style I want, and I am going to use Modern Language Association 8th edition MLA. Um, and I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to give me this bar to search. Now, I usually just search in here, but I do have some colleagues who prefer classic view. Um, and when you click on that, it lets you sort of search around in your Zotero library a little bit more easily. So I'll show, I'll show you both ways. Um, so I will say, all right, so I'm going to use, um, I'll use that Time Magazine article as my source here. And because that article looks like maybe it didn't have, oh, here's what I need. 
Um, so this back up. So that didn't work out like exactly the way I wanted it to. So what I can do is double click on it. Usually, oh, there it is. Sorry, I have been using this in Docs most recently, so I forget sometimes where the different things are. But here I can click Edit Citation, and because I know this is written by Carlson, but if I want to have a specific page number, so if I were to ever have something where I quoted directly from a page, this is where I could add that. So I could add, um, let's just say it's on page 14 of that article. And when I update that, it updates it automatically for me, author, space, page number. So it's very handy um, in terms of doing that. Let me add some more sentences here. Um, Ginsburg was well known. or often writing dissenting opinions. And I'm going to do the same thing here, add edit citation. This time I'm just going to stick with this instead of the classic view. Um, I'm just going to search Ginsburg because I know um, there's something in there. And here is a source um, which was about a specific dissenting opinion. And once again, I don't actually know the page numbers here, so I will just add, make one up. But if you were really citing, you would actually know the page number, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. So I've got EPS 16. I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna use something, imagine that I'll use something from this like biography by Bayer. Um, and this I want to show you because I can say, according to Bayer, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg always wanted to be a lawyer and a judge. Um, this could be a total lie. I don't know. I haven't read that book, but we'll just imagine it is true. And in this case, I'm going to do the same thing, add a citation. And the difference here is, well, I know it's Bayer, so I can search. I'm going to click it. But the main thing to do here is that since I referenced the author's name in my sentence, I don't actually have to have it in my citation. Um, so if I know, again, that this was from page 22 of this book, I can click Suppress Author here and click Enter. Um, and since Bayer is already right here, it would be like kind of redundant to have it in this as well. So that's why I suppressed the author. It's not wrong. Um, if you want to be safe, you can always put the author in again at the end of the citation. Um, but just to show you that that's an option. Okay. Um, many authors have written about impact on the Supreme Court. Do you think this is faster than just like typing it, typing it all in like manually? Yes, and I'll show you why. Um, to a certain extent, it depends on the length of your paper. Uh, the longer the paper, the better, like the faster this is, the faster using Zotero is. Um, but I'll just show you in a moment here um, what makes it so magical. Um, and on the US as a whole. And this would be something where maybe I want to pull in multiple people or multiple authors. Um, so here's that. Um, let's see here. So I'm just putting a bunch of them in uh, because every once in a while you will. Uh, be in a situation where you cite multiple sources like in the same um, in-text citation. So there they all are and it formats it for me. So what makes this so helpful is let's pretend that that my paper is done. The shortest paper in the world. It's mm -hmm. done. So I'm going to go to my next page here um, because when you create your works cited list, um, they want it to be on the next page. And so oops, I'm going to right up work cited here because that's again something else that Zotero doesn't do. It doesn't do the like formatting in that way. 
Um, but back on my Zotero here, I'm going to click Add Edit Bibliography, and now it has pulled in the full bibliography of everything I cited in the text. So to me, this is where it saves a huge amount of time. So you can imagine that doing that is much faster than like typing in all of this information. Um, so when you're looking at it from the uh, in-text citations, it's not that much faster for that, right? I could type Carlson 14 faster than I could have pulled that down through the add edit citation option. But the big like bang for your buck here is when you use that work cited list at the end. Um, the other thing that can be really helpful about using Zotero is let's say you did your paper and you did all your citations in MLA, but your professor's like, no, I actually wanted APA. Um, so you can click document preferences here and you can change it to APA 7th edition, click OK and it reorganizes all of it in the proper formatting. Um, mm -hmm. so changed the in-text citations as well as the um, citations here at the end. So hopefully that is convincing in terms of time saving. It's very nice to be able to have that. Um, when you are finally, like when you're ultimately done with, uh, with a paper, um, you can unlink the citations um, and then it just saves as like a normal Word document. Um, if you have the citations in there every once in a while, it won't work as well, like it won't download as well because mm -hmm. you need to pull all that like behind the scenes kind of information in. But the um, Zotero.org, um, their support documentation has like really good help with that and letting you know. But I don't ever do that until I'm like totally 100% done. Um, so, for example, if I want to fix, if I notice something in here that I think is wrong, like this Siegel article, I would, I think I want this JSTOR to be italicized. So, if I go back to Zotero, go to my Siegel article, um, and I think maybe it's because it's here. Let's see. Or maybe not. I don't know. Clean catalog. Um, but I can clean things up here. Uh, actually, let me try. So let me try this one. This, um, if I want to rearrange this, so if I looked at the article and it actually said Ruth Bader Ginsburg first and then her, her life and death dates second, um, I could, again, kind of clean that up in here. And then I'm going to hit this little sync button to make sure that everything is all synced up. Um, and then once I have done that and it has synced, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to click refresh. Um, and it took off the JSTOR that I removed here. Um, and it also, um, unhighlight it, um, with the Time Magazine article, um, it changed the order here. So that's one of the other values. If you see something that's messed up, um, you can fix it over in Zotero. And then it, it's always going to be fixed whenever you are exporting it out like this. So do you have any other questions? That was a good question about sort of the, the time saving situation. Um, can you show again, like how um, you um, kind of put in the whole citation? Yeah, so do you mean put, put it in in Word or like put it in here? Like just transfer it from Zotero onto the page onto this page. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try another one. Um, Ginsburg wrote an important article about her work. And then I'm going to do the add edit citation. And here it's just a search bar, but this is also where you can do classic view and you can search a little bit more easily and also browse around. So that's sometimes easier. Um, and so this one is my actual article by Ginsburg. So if I click, well, again, let me do my, let me do my page number thing, 22. Um, and this is where I could also, again, suppress that author since I already used her name. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it will, oh, and I forgot to change this back. So let me change this back to MLA style because you can change it as many times as you want. 
Um, so that's how you do the add edit citations. If you have added something new, um, it sometimes will take, yeah, actually, no, it did it really quickly there because I changed the style. Whenever I added that new source that I hadn't yet cited, um, it pulled it into my citations down here in my works cited. So it pulled in a Ginsburg article um, as it showed up in Zotero. Okay. And with Zotero, let me, once again, let me go over here. So in the Zotero documentation, um, they have everything like really laid out uh, in a very organized way, which makes sense because they're all about organizing stuff. Um, but they have um, a section on their word processor plugins and integration um, where they talk a little bit about how it works. Um, and also they have links to some, um, this is an older screencast, but it, it works in a very similar way. There are usually lots of um, different uh, like YouTube videos that you can find um, that describe how it works or you can contact us in the library. So if you're ever having um, any issues with uh, Zotero, you can from the library homepage, um, you can click chat with a librarian and say help I'm having trouble using Zotero with Word. Um, and if they can't get you started, they'll get you in touch with someone who can. I'm also going to go ahead and put my email address right in the um, Zotero, I mean <laughs> Zotero, Zoom chat um, so you can see it and you can feel free to call me. Um, and you should have my, um, the, you should have my um, email from when I sent the Zoom link out earlier too. So you can always contact me. Um, and then I'll also just show you here. I'm going to put the link to these slides again um, because they the all the links within the slides are active and live so you can kind of follow those and see um, what I have recommended but I was just going to show you some of my favorite resources um, for MLA specifically here I like MLA style center which is like the actual MLA the modern language associations website I like our UNCG libraries MLA guide of course I'm biased like the Excelsior, Excelsior Online Writing Lab, which I've mentioned. And then there is an MLA citation template from EasyBib um, that sometimes I use um, to kind of help me figure out um, where certain pieces of a citation go. But the way I use something like this one, which is the Online Writing Lab from Excelsior, is I go into their MLA style section, look at their work cited examples, and see if I have an online magazine article like that one we had from Time. I can look at their examples and just make sure that mine also, well, I guess there's an online like from the internet, but I can look to see, does mine look basically like this? Um, and if it doesn't, I can try to figure out kind of where the issues might be. Um, and it goes through, there's journal articles, books, kind of generally the things that people are most likely to cite. Um, and for me, again, this is something that helps me. I like to compare what I have to an example to see if I need to, um, you know, update anything or tweak anything. Um, so that's how I use resources like that. Um, and then my favorite Zotero resources, and I think here's one that I think might be useful for you, and I'm also going to just put this in the chat. Um, this is a self-paced tutorial. I find this really helpful. Um, our online learning librarian developed this um, based on um, something that one of our colleagues at Wake Forest did, but it literally goes through everything. Um, and one of the things I like, so if you're like, oh no, I'm already good with installing it, I've got sources, I'm organized, I've got all that, but I want to work on citations and bibliographies, you can go to that section and it and walks through like how you can do this. It, just walks through some of those basics um, and then talks about site as you write um, and the tools for docs and word um, and it kind of just walks through step by step which I find super helpful again I'm a I'm a step by step kind of person too um, so I find this very handy um, and again I have that linked from these slides and then I've mentioned Zotero's documentation sec section several times 
And that's one that I find really super useful. So we just did a real whirlwind adventure with Zotero and MLA. Um, <laughs> do you have any other questions for me? You've had great questions. Um, no, not right now. All right. Well, um, you know, I, I, I did really like your question about sort of like, it, is it worth it? And like I was saying, the longer the paper and the more sources you have, the more worth that it is. If I were mm -hmm. writing a paper and I only had like one source or even two sources, let me show you another handy resource that's actually from the same people that created Zotero um, and it's called zbib.org. Um, and it is very helpful, again, when you just have like maybe one or two things. Um, so let me find like one of my citations. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's really helpful for the, the work cited page. Yeah, it definitely is. I think, you know, like more so than um, just, just the in-text. If it was just in-text, it would be like, yeah, I can do that on my own. But with the works cited page, it's like takes it to another level. Um, so let me see if I have a link that'll work. Okay, here's what I'll do. This is one where I'm going to use the book source that I found and I'm going to use the ISBN. So you can paste in like a URL here or an ISBN or if it's an article with a digital object identifier, a DOI, any like unique identifying number. Um, so I'm going to paste the ISBN of that book, um, Sisters-in-Law, um, and it pulls it in and I can say here, okay, what I need is actually the MLA. So if this were the only thing I was using, this would give me a starting, actually, that's not, that's not very good. <laughs> so that was a bad example. That's not a great one, but um, I, I do use this zbib.org a lot and you can, um, it does let you clean things up kind of the same way Zotero does. Like, I don't care if it was a first edition. Um, I don't need to know that Harper is an imprint of Harper Collins. Um, and these are all things like that I know just from citing sources a lot. Um, but, um, as you sort of get more comfortable, you'll start noticing this kind of stuff and seeing uh, what needs to be fixed when you're mm -hmm. using a source like this. But you can probably tell here, like just like in the full Zotero, it has that like extra box. Um, so it's definitely same kind of deal um, as what you see with full on Zotero, but it is a little bit less intense. Um, so if you're ever doing a paper with just a couple, a couple of sources, this is a good one and you can copy from here um, or change information about the page and then it lets you copy the citation. You can also copy the whole thing to your clipboard. So that's a good, you know, sort of quick fix if you need something like that. I'm going to stop the recording so I don't forget.